Today, my goal is to convince you absolutely that Optimus is ready to be used in the real world in various great use cases. I'm going to use a video that I found of a silkscreen printing competition where these guys were the fastest in the world at silkscreening t-shirts. Now, I know a lot about the silkscreening of t-shirt business. I've helped a client uh, completely renovate his shop with regard to how quickly they could make shirts and how well they could make them. Um, and I will tell you one thing that I learned, and that is the more people that you have on the equipment, the faster you can make t-shirts. And in fact, the cost goes down, not up. Sometimes you'd think, oh, I added a lot more labor. And so my cost would go up per shirt. But no, in the, this particular case, as you'll see, the more labor you add in, the faster you can go. And that the faster you go, the less your cost is per impression. So we're going to take a look at this situation. I, th I think you're going to see a lot of places where the Optimus, as you know it today, could absolutely take some of these positions. You might hear roosters going off in the background. Um, that I'm in, in Kauai and the roosters have taken over the island. The, the chickens have taken over the island. And so if there's a rooster crowing, um, well, you'll know why that's happening. Okay, so here we go. We're going to play the video. So th this will be a lot of fun. I think you'll enjoy it even for the showing how this was done and how fast they could do it. So, uh, so these first few guys are just prepping the shirts. See, we got two guys pulling over the shirts, stacking them up. Now you've got this fellow, he's the loader. The loader is the most important guy. He's the guy that has the most skill, but you'll notice he has two guys helping him. So one guy's picking up the shirt. The second guy is opening it up. So this guy, the loader can grab it and put it on the, on the platen. Now, the, when he's loading it, he's got to load it really straight and really uh, flat. It can't have any creases and whatnot. So he knows what he's doing. He's done this a lot so that he can uh, keep clear that he's doing a great job. Um, you'll see this is a trade show and lots of people are taking pictures of how this is happening. Now, this guy, all he's doing is spraying adhesive. So right away, we're seeing a guy who's doing nothing but spraying adhesive. He has to decide if, the, if it's time to spray it again. I think the robot could do that. I think the robot could be opening these shirts like that second guy is. I think that all of those things, those things so far, the first guy picking it up, the second guy opening it up. Now the loading, that might still have to be a human, but maybe the robot could even do that. So now you've got four different positions that we've identified, three of which are pretty clearly something that a human could do, uh, that a robot could do. Now this is taking the, the uh, t-shirts off at the other end and putting them on the dryer. Most equipment doesn't have an automated way to do that. So that would be a fifth position that clearly the robot could do. All, it's, all it is is taking the t-shirt off and putting on top of this dryer. Very, very simple. It doesn't have to be, it could be wrinkled. It could be misshapen. It doesn't really matter. Very simple job for the robot to do. Now, the person that's taking it off and putting it on the dryer is also supposed to be doing QC. So the robot, because it has vision, would be able to also do QC better than a human. We've talked about that before. So if you've watched other videos that I've done on the same subject. So now we've got five positions, four of which could clearly be done by a robot. Now we're, you're gonna see in a minute here, we're gonna be getting to the other end of the dryer. And you, what you have at the other end of the dryer is people taking off, taking the t-shirt off of the dryer and uh, stacking it, preparing it, uh, to be taken in, and uh, go into some kind of post-production, like putting them into bags or just folding them, putting them in boxes, all kinds of different possibilities. But you'll see uh, when we get to the folding part that, I'm sorry, to the uh, taking off of the dryer, you'll see that this is also another job that there's no reason why the bot shouldn't be able to do. Now, uh, so one, two, three, four, five positions that we've identified so far. All right, here they're going into the dryer. This is a really fast, really great dryer. A lot of them are not quite, quite this fast. But anyway, because of the speed they're doing. Now, here's you guys taking it off. So what you've got, because it's so fast, it's taking two people to take them off the dryer. So they're going to the right and to the left. Now, this would be an easy job. Doesn't have to be straight. Doesn't have to be anything. So they're putting them over there. Now, you'll notice that there's also two guys that are handling them after they get over there. So I don't know why they have two guys doing that. It seems like one could do it, but there's a total now of two, four, six positions at that end. Uh, now we're going back to loading up brand new shirts uh, because they're running out at the front end. Um, 
So once again, we're just taking a look at some of these different positions, some of the different opportunities. Um, but so that's six jobs at the takeoff end of the job where all of those, I think, should be able to be done by an optimist. When we come back around, and they'll show it again. I think you'll agree with me that that is a job that optimists could easily do is take the, the garment off. Now, the person who's taking off and those two gentlemen who are receiving it from the guy who's taking it off, those three and three individuals are also responsible for QC. Everybody at that end of the equipment is responsible for taking a look at the shirt and making sure that there aren't mistakes, that there aren't creases, that there isn't ink coming off. Um, you've got uh, so many people in this particular situation, so many people doing that. Maybe one of them is primarily responsible for QC. Um, typically, in a, in, a, in a typical shop where you might be going at one third the speed or even less, you might only have one or two people that are actually performing that takeoff job. Now, what's not going to be shown in this video is the post, uh, post production. And that would be, again, where you might be folding them and putting them into a box, folding them, putting them into a bag, sealing the bag, and then putting the sealed bag into a box, then sealing the box and sending it on down uh, for shipping. Um, but you can imagine that uh, folding, there are folding machines and they have folding machines that will put it into a, a bag as well. They're not going to be showing that today, but they do have equipment that does that folding job and then uh, automatically puts it into a bag and seals it. But a lot of times the job is too short run. It, it's not, uh, it, it doesn't make sense to set it up for that specific garment uh, to be put into a specific bag, etc. So you end up having individuals uh, uh, doing the folding and the bagging and uh, putting them into boxes and sealing it. So there again, you might have one, two, three, or four jobs. These are not our jobs for the robot to do. Optimus could, I think Optimus could easily fold. Uh, that might be the hardest one of the jobs we're talking about. But then if you have the folded t-shirt going onto another piece of wood, like they're doing here, but laying on a piece of wood, that wood, the robot could pick up the wood and slide the t-shirt into a bag and then sealing the bag. You just pick up the bag and put it into a piece of, uh, into a sealing um, machine. Then you take it out of the sealing machine and put it into a box. Uh, sealing a box, I think sealing a box is also something that Optimus could probably do already, but certainly that time is coming. There are auto, uh, automatic sealing, uh, uh, automatic equipment for sealing boxes as well, where you put a box in and it goes through and automatically brings the tape across. But that assumes, again, that you've got enough boxes of the same size because you don't want to set up for a short run uh, to use that kind of sealing equipment. So uh, in smaller shops in particular, you're going to have shorter runs. You might only have uh, 100 shirts or 200 shirts or 300 shirts for a piece of equipment this size. Um, and then you, you're not going to want to set up to have a automatic box sealer to take that responsibility. So I think at this point, out of the uh, jobs, we've had uh, six, I think, uh, a total of 12 positions, not counting post-production, a total of 12 positions, 11 of which... I'm confident could be handled by Tesla, uh, the uh, Tesla Optimus, um, and only one, probably the loader, would be the hardest job, uh, and even that one probably would be subject to to potentially being uh, handled by the robot as well. And by the way, I forgot a couple of other things. There's also, I think they're going to show it in a second. There's also uh, somebody who goes around and checks to make sure there's enough ink in each of the different stations. Um, and then you might also have uh, a manager, uh, which the, the at least right now, the optimist would not be uh, in a position to do that. Anyway, this is the video. I thought that might be fun just to watch it, just to see what they're doing, just to see how shirts are imprinted in an, with a, using an automated press. But most of all, what I'm trying to say to you is Optimus is ready. Optimus can do this work. Um, and not, not next year. Not five years from now, the optimist that you've seen on the various videos where all it's doing is picking something up and then moving it over to someplace else. This is not hard to do. And these kind of presses, these kind of print shops, there are thousands of these all over the United States. More thousands in Thailand and China and Indonesia. Thousands and thousands of these kinds of setups, printing t-shirts and sweatshirts and, and, uh, and uh, hoodies and all kinds of different garments. Um, it's not a it's not a small business as you can well imagine because you probably have four five six ten or twenty 
t-shirts and other garments in your house that are printed. Um, it's a very large, large total output that uh, takes place. Most of it, uh, a lot ton of it in China, but huge numbers done in the United States on equipment, just like the one you were looking at. So I hope this was interesting. Hope it was useful. If it was, of course, you want to like and and uh, and uh, do all that kind of stuff. And uh, and tell me, let me know in the comments. Why couldn't Optimus do this job now? Why wouldn't Tesla be able to start selling Optima or leasing Optimi even next year? If they should be able to produce a million at least next year, that's my feeling. I can't see why they can't. I'm getting a little bit of blowback now from some of the people who really I thought were totally on board with this. But part of the blowback I'm getting is only that that uh, they would use them internally only uh, in 2024. Um, are, are only for themselves and for their suppliers. I think that they are going to want to put it in situations like this where they can start to find out what is the real market, how easy it is to train people that are not in the Tesla world. No, I'm, I'm okay. You could start this year to put them in the Tesla plants. Early next year, maybe you're putting them into supplier plants. But sometime in 2024, I think Tesla will start leasing these two companies all over the United States and maybe even all over the world uh, to test them in lots and lots and lots of different environments, train them in lots and lots of different environments, because quite frankly, why not? That's the question I want the answer to. Why wouldn't they? What would keep them from doing it as quickly as they possibly can? What are the what would be the two, three, five, ten reasons that you could imagine that would keep them from being able to just start slamming these things out of the factory and moving them onto the workshop floor. I can't figure out what the reasons. Yes, safety, I understand. I don't think that's a big, heavy-duty thing to overcome. They're either going to be safe or they're not. Pinch points in arms or things of that nature. Uh, you know, I, I just don't think it's that hard to figure those safety issues out and make sure that they're covered. Once you're putting them in, in Tesla's factories, and you're testing them in Tesla factories, then those safety issues should be uh, worked out. And I, I, again, I, I can't figure it out. I, I maybe I'm just the optimist of optimist optimist of the year, or the decade, or the century. But I'm having a very hard time figuring out why they would not make a million of these units next year, and they would have them in their own plants, they would have them in supplier plants, and they would have them starting to go into uh, just customers that they would. Uh, that would apply uh, to get a lease and that Tesla would start to uh, push them out into the overall world. Anyway, uh, that's my thought for the day. Let me know where I'm wrong. This is Randy Kirk. It's been great talking to you. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.